Hi, this is Dave Anderson, Heli Cools Helipad. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that I just got back from a 50 miler and my trailer is still pretty much a disaster. I just can't help myself. I need to uh, start another project and this is a project that I've been putting off for a couple of weeks because, well, I just didn't have time to do it. But uh, anyway, this is the project. Uh, I'm going to, I usually build everything in small scale just to make sure that I got it right. And uh, it's just a really good idea to do that. So you're not wasting a whole bunch of time and possibly some larger resources because, well, this isn't a huge resource and, um, you know, you can, you can uh, make all your mistakes with this and it doesn't cost you too much. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put this together and then I'm going to try for the real thing here. All right, so stay tuned. You're going to have some fun, learn some lashings, and build a pioneering tower in your own backyard. I have never actually used a kit like this uh, before. I usually uh, just use like uh, those the apple um, suckers that you uh, trim out of the apple trees in the uh, early spring. Um, so that you have a better uh, apple crop, um, and the, and I use those those sticks because they they look really natural. Um, these look very very uh, man-made, obviously, because they're perfectly round. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of distressing with this, and I'm definitely not going to use that ball of twine uh, just because it does not look. Um, if I was to imagine this full size or take a picture of it really close so that you thought it was full size, this would be a dead giveaway that it wasn't. So instead, I'm going to use uh, this natural uh, fiber. It's, it's called jute, and it's pretty inexpensive, and it comes in these pretty monstrous rolls, and I'll have plenty of lashing material just in this roll. Um, so first, I need to distress these, and I'm going to use uh, the belt sander to do that. You could use uh, a knife. Um, to uh, whittle along the edges and I'm also going to use uh, some uh, probably some pen and ink techniques to make it look like there's uh, little knots and imperfections in the wood just to make it look like it's a little bit more authentic all right first things first let's get this out of here uh, I didn't break anything all right, I just got a belt sander. This uh, comes from Harbor Freight. Um, I recommend Harbor Freight just because, well, heck, I've had this for, I don't know, pretty close to 20 years. Um, it works great, lasts a long time, and it's pretty doggone inexpensive. Um, yeah, there's some certain things that you don't want to get, but uh, Harbor Freight's pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, sometimes you can get these things for the price of about um, a third the cost of, let's say, a DeWalt. Um, and uh, so you can go through three of these even um, and I bet you the DeWalt doesn't last as long uh, uh, with three of these so anyway um, on to the distressing part tell there's uh, quite a bit of difference you can see that these four on the left here it looks like they have some really good texture to it and of course these three on the right they're still perfectly round um, I've noticed that if you kind of turn turn the rod on the belt sander as it is spinning it puts some really nice um, texture into, into the rod. 
Hooey, that was a lot of sanding. My fingers are sore. But at least these are, uh, they're looking a little bit more natural. And so that's a good thing. And I've also decided, because one of them actually, when I was spinning it around, got caught right in here. And I put a little burn mark in it. And that burn mark looked really cool. So I think instead of putting pen and ink to it, uh, I'm just going to get my um, little soldering iron that uh, is also a wood burner. And I'm going to just burn a little bit of uh, oh imperfections in this stuff to make it look uh, really authentic. And I think that is going to be the trick. So all you need is a piece of wood uh, to protect the table from getting burned. Um, I just have a soldering iron because I couldn't find my wood burning tool. Um, soldering iron works pretty good. Um, all you have to do is uh, touch the wood just a little bit and all of a sudden you have a knot hole. So you don't have to do too much, just put a little bit on there. Um, I'm planning on maybe staining this, this with some tea or some coffee just to give it an old uh, feel instead of it looking such brightly colored um, brand new wood. We meant to be in the great outdoors forever free. Like I said, I've got a little bit of experience uh, in building these uh, models and one thing I can tell you is is uh, when you're dealing with stuff this light it is very difficult to um, hold on to both this and the piece that you're trying to 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 get together on here um, and and get this lashing actually done that thing wants to flip all over the place and you and you can't get it tight so um, what I've noticed that the best thing to do, is uh we'll just get a get a stick like this and just tape this tape this thing down so i'm gonna grab a little bit of tape i want to make sure that this thing is taped down pretty good so it can't slide out all over the place and i'm even going to tape this support piece down now this lower piece is just so that I can get uh, the rope underneath here a little bit easier and so what I'm actually going to be doing is uh, using one of these and I'm going to tie a square lashing right here um, and this should aid in you know holding holding all this down pretty good I uh, might give it just a little bit more tape, but uh, anyway, my square lashing is going to be right here. I'm going to start with probably about, um, oh, 18 inches at least, if not two feet, and just cut the rest off uh, when I'm done with the lashing. Okay, so the first one, I'm going to tie a Japanese square lashing. In order to do that, you uh, even... Uh, out your ends. You just got a loop on the other side. Just put it on there like this. And what I like to do is I just like to start from it uh, below because a lot of times uh, when you're tying this together for real life and you put it underneath, this is wanting to fall down because of gravity if this thing was straight up. So I put it underneath like this and then just start tying the knot or tying the lashing rather. So in order to tie it, you uh, just go over the top, it's kind of more difficult with these strings or like I said, any little bump that's going to want to try to tear it away from you. So it's even again, right? Ah, there. It's really hard to get these things started at first because they just want to fly everywhere. They just don't want to cooperate. Okay, so all I did was go over the top and then cross in the back. I should never have any line cross here and I should have no lines crossing under here. Um, so they all should be parallel to each other.
again the tape is kind of helping me hold it all down so I can see up here that there's two wraps already and this will make three wraps let's see if this technique will kind of help hold it in place Okay, so there's three wraps. I pull it pretty tight. Oops, I pulled it a little bit too tight. And we're still lined up there. So those are my wraps. Now I need to do my fraps. So this I just cross it here. And I just start making the, the frap part. Now this I want to make sure this is good and tight. And this is where a partner helping out is going to come in handy if they're holding it. Uh, but right now my tape is holding, barely. So that makes three fraps. Now all I'm going to do is a left over right. And a right over left. So yes, you guessed it. Square knot is finishing with a, or the square lashing rather, is finishing with a square knot. And I had plenty left over to, uh, um, to hold with my hands to tie this off. And then I'm just going to snip these with a pair of scissors. Oh, probably about an inch or so from where the knot is. And there it is. You see none, no lines cross there. Look at the other side. And no lines are crossing here. That is your square lashing. Ends with a square knot. I have two sides done. Uh, my intent is going to be to add um, a pull here and a pull here. And then when I'm done with it, just turn them in like this. And that will be the third side. So that is the goal that I'm uh, shooting for is uh, just to lay it out like this. And then uh, basically roll it up into a square. I hope all this works.
Well, now that I've rolled it up, and uh, it's a little easier to work with now, the more th the more items you have on here, it kind of holds it together a little better. But uh, I just have this one stringer to finish up here, and then the one the one uh, brace across here. Um, and then the actual uh, tower part frame will be done, and then I just have to finish up with the two uh, diagonal supports, the uh, platform, and then the ladder. All right, now that the tower frame is done, these, of course, are all, every single one of them are square lashings. So now when we put these supports on, which will be on the inside of the lower to the inside of the upper, these will be tied on with diagonal lashing. Now what's a diagonal lashing start with? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Of course, that's right. It starts with a timber hitch. So starting off with a timber hitch, huh? Okay. Now I think what I'm going to do to kind of ease this along is I think I'm going to tape it to the top inside and I'm just going to give a little bit of tape just to hold it in place just to make it a little bit easier for me so tie the diagonal lashing right there okay so timber hitch so you cross you just make a loop there and then you have to go inside this at least how many times how many times that's right four times yeah I know I saw the little piece fall out of there I'll, I'll have to get it put back in okay there's at least four times Okay, and then we do three wraps on the side. Now this is what kind of gets scouts a lot. If you look, you'll see that there's an X right here. So you notice I went in this part of the X, this part of the X, and now I just have to go into this part and this part to do the diagonal lashing. And that's, that's the best way I know how to do it, is uh, just remember to go through the, the X's. Okay. That's three times through the X's right there. So now I've got the X's covered. Now I have to do the fraps. So I don't go through any part of the X. I just go right around where the wraps are wrapping. There we go. Two wraps. And there's three wraps. And then uh, we end this with a with a glove hitch. All right, I just want to point out that the instructions that this thing came with uh, doesn't really tell you um, what lashings to use. Um, and if you just go by the picture, you'll see that these um, go on the inside all the way up. And if you happen to mess up and put this on the outside, um, if you have um, obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> undiagnosed of course like I do you'll want to clip that off and put it back on the inside so when you're actually doing this one here you want to make sure that your whole structure is actually um, more or less level so that uh, because when you put this together and and, and tie this on here and, and uh, it can be very uh, wampus if you don't uh, um, get the make sure that it's level prior to tying these knots all right then, so if you wind up with a little bit of teeter-totter like this, especially if it's on this end, follow this up to this back side here. Now if I was to lower this, it's gonna make it worse. But if I was to bring it forward, it actually is sitting pretty level right now so just by moving this on that one long side will make the difference of whether this thing sets level or it doesn't set level and that's how to adjust it all right well it's time to put the platform on and again these will just be your square lashings 
pretty easy lashing. We've done most of these just out of square lashings. All right, now instead of tying all of these together uh, with, with the other uh, floor lashing support on this side, um, I've just done the front and the back, and I'm going to make a little uh, change to the diagram. Um, instead of uh, putting all of these poles um, uh, like this, uh, I think what I'm going to do is add two of them underneath here, and I'm going to attach it to these poles, and then the rest of them will sit on top like this. I think that's uh, a little bit better. I have a little bit more room uh, than than underneath here. I just don't have the room to attach these. Um, let me get, see a little different picture here. I just don't have enough room on this pole to attach this. There's just a whole bunch of lashing and whatnot in the way. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to put it underneath here and attach it to these two stringers. Now for the ease of, of uh, tying these uh, stringers for the um, platform, I've just flipped the tower upside down just to make it a little easier to tie it. And you can tie it clear out here and then just slide it over once you're done. Um, now, of course, the larger project, you'll have to tie it uh, pretty close because you probably won't be able to slide it so easily. All right, now that the platform supports are all in, and I just want to note that uh, building this is going to take you every bit as long as building the real thing, if not more so, because it's, it's so small, it's just hard to control. And you still have all of the lashings um, that, that basically take you just as long to uh, work with these little strings as it will be with the larger ones. So don't get frustrated with it. So on with the um, uh, platform lashings. So the platform lashings, which are these two lashings right there, they uh, start off with a clove hitch. And then you just put the um, post in there, wrap it over the top, come underneath, and then you just put a loop on this side, and then it goes back up, and then you put the next one in. Wrap it under, bring it around, put a loop on the outside, and so on and so forth until you're done. Okay, so here we go. So this just goes down underneath. You come out and you do a loop and now you're back up to the center again whoops and you're ready to put your next one in you go down make yourself a loop now you're on to the next one. Okay. Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to do with this is uh, I'm going to uh, stain it with some tea or some coffee. Um, or uh, maybe just uh, some wood stain. Um, the only thing is I recommend is where you have the knots, you might want to dab a little bit of super glue um, and that will basically hold the knot in place and won't allow it to go anywhere. Or what you could do is after you've, you've uh, um, stained all this, you can um, shellac it 